Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanaliz at Dawn. I'm your host, Chad Fury 333 and we're going to be starting out this series of matches with a match between Orphelius and Anir on Aquatic Divide. Wasn't entirely sure about this one, but it did pop up as one of the ones that people commented on, and I like to do matches that people put little comments in on the forums, so I decided to do this one, even though Aquatic Divide has a tendency to be a little bit turtly. These choke points have a bad habit of locking down armies to the point that it's this long, drawn-out grind. However... Seeing as Enyar went Amph bots, allowing for them to use this center pond as a transit point, and, well, Orphelius went air, so who cares about the ground, it actually shouldn't be a big problem. Although, to be fair, Orphelius will probably build some ground factory at some point fairly shortly. But until that happens, they don't have to worry about the terrain whatsoever. Enyar starting out with a couple ducks as well, and not getting... Well, not getting a particularly aggressive start. I mean, they have a few ducks, partly for defense, partly potentially for an offensive push. Of course, they have the early conch as well, which I approve of, because early builders are always good. Orphelius, on the other hand, much more focused on setting up their early ravens, and I'm guessing that they're going to be going in for a commander snipe. Because when we go for four ravens right off the bat, and that's exactly what Orphelius is doing, you're going for a comp snipe. Pretty much always. So, it's it'll be interesting. Seeing as the two the only two ravens that are up so far, Orphelius is trying to reclaim as best they can to get that metal in. Make it useful, get those ravens built. But at the same time, there is always the fact that their energy's getting a little low and their commander's still building stuff, so these ravens are taking their sweet time being built. I mean, in theory, it should take 30 seconds anyway. The, the factory's only doing 10 build power and throw 300 metal each. So, Anir does have the initiative, at least right now, with the ducks coming in here. We should see a couple of them go down to a couple of the ravens. But on, after that, there's quite a few more ducks where they came from, and the ravens are quite vulnerable to the ducks. And here, however, going just to double check whether or not Orphelius has set up any additional metal extractors, any expansions, which Anir is not doing yet, but kind of on the way to doing. At this point, though, Anir does have about the same level of economic health as Orphelius. A bit more energy, a bit more of a build power base, so they can very easily accelerate any construction if they need to. But they might be losing their commander right now. The Ravens are coming in, actually forced to turn back, not able to go to the commander as the Ducks coming in, providing a massive threat. And even with the Ravens coming in and tearing them apart, there is still enough Duck Force here to easily wreck what's left of Orphelius' base. Like, Anir, they're in a good spot right now. They're choosing to retreat, however, which I find surprising. They are, however, building Anglitz, which I don't find surprising at all. They want that anti-air. Ducks can't easily hit Ravens. Bit of shame, but hey, at this point, I'm a bit surprised that Ducks didn't go in. Like, I really am. It would have been a suicide mission, but it might have been worth it, just considering the circumstances. That being said, though, Anir does have the Angler. They do have a fairly strong anti-air force as a result, and at this point, all they really need to do is hold the line. Of course, here's that ground factor I was talking about. Orphelia is setting up a shield bot factory, which... That will be interesting. So the shield bot factory compared to amphibious bots... I mean, bandits do about as well as glaives against the ducks. The ducks do deal enough damage, like... 230 damage. Oh, actually, never mind. 230 damage. Bandits will survive a single hit from a duck, with gla which glaives do not. So, this is going to be a more interesting situation than just ducks go in, slaughter all the bandits, and then the remaining bandits kill the ducks. And at the same time, Orphelius has burned a lot of money or a lot of metal onto these planes that are not going to do much. So, Anir's early scouting got its value. The only downside, they don't know there is a shield bot factory coming. And that could be a problem, but considering that Amphib Factory pretty much just has ducks, I mean, you have duck, and you have more ducks, eventually you get grizzlies, you might sometimes get, say, I don't know, a th the occasional scallop, and then boys, of course, later on in the game. But at this stage in the game, no, nah, mass ducks should be fine. Mass ducks with angler support actually will be absolutely devastating. If these the bandits don't survive, and they will manage to get a, one volley each, but there are enough ducks. They can just wipe out this entire line of bandits, no problem. That could be an issue. Orphelius does, however, have 20 build power going in here. There is enough... There is enough of an army, there is enough economy, there is enough production that these bandits, while they might die, the reinforcements will be enough to tear apart the ducks coming in behind. And actually, this is, this is a situation where I'd say it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a few scallops. I don't expect to see that. I mean, the anglers are... The anglers are the main place. Actually, never mind. No, 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 no. I do see it. What am I saying? That's exactly what Anir is doing. Well done, Anir. Doing exactly the thing that would make sense for the bandits, now that they spotted them. Although, to be fair, very few people actually do go for the scallops, or used to go for the scallops. Amphmet has probably changed a bit, just... I don't see a massive amount of amph play recently. 
That being said, it is still a good idea. I like the scallop idea. I think it's going to be a little bit tricky because scallops are fairly expensive and the boys are more likely the thing to go for because that's generally how things have been. You go duck into boy. But at this point, this should still work out. And the anglers, like I said, there's the center pond. That's what they, you're useful for. Making the ravens regret ever actually existing because at this point there's only two left and they've gotten basically no value. They were able to defend a little bit and that's about it. Not to mention the bandits coming in here are going to be answered by the scallop, although the scallop being quite out of position will leave the bandits open to do enough damage that it might not even matter. I mean, this entire set of wind generators, it's basically dead. The only upside being that there's enough spare energy on Anir's part that it won't matter greatly, but yeah, they're dead. There's not much left of them. Sorry, wind generators. You, you spun, briefly. You spun, you stop spinning, such is life. However, the bandits in the main base here, it's... Uh, I don't know, it's tricky. The two lotuses are good, but there's enough... There are enough bandits here that this main base could be completely wrecked. Maybe not destroyed entirely, but... No, destroyed entirely. I, I retract that statement. It's going to be completely wrecked because there's nothing stopping it. The lotuses are trying. The boys are trying. But, really, Orphelius has managed to get so much damage in here that all Anir could do at this point would be a counterattack. And they have quite a few ducks, actually. Four, well, 13... Well, 12 ducks, one scallop... A bunch of anglers. Air support can't stop them. The bandits are mostly out of position. There are a few in the main base, but the primary production center of Orphelius's base is not that well protected. I mean, yeah, there's a Stardust. Okay, sure, that is a bit of a problem. But the thing is, there's only that Stardust. That's it. There's not much else. All that's left for or Anir to do is essentially go and do exactly what they're doing now. Go north. Go into a roach! Good thinking, Orphelius. Very good thinking. So, okay. <laughs> Orphelius managing to completely stuff that entire approach, and Anir, I mean, they're got, they're having to rebuild. They're not doing too terribly, all things considered, economically speaking, but, oh man, that must be painful. Not to mention the anglers getting threatened by another Roche, and there's not, nothing they can do about it. The Roche is faster than them, and they can't fight it. Luckily for them, they're tough enough that it's not a big deal, but still, this is... That's a big blow. But the bandits coming in afterwards, the scalp... The scalp's last stand could be successful, and indeed, it will at least keep the anglers alive for the time being, but it's not enough. The anglers gotten out of position from the scallop. Those bandits will have a field day, and the anglers cannot get to the water, which they need to do in order to heal back up. I mean, the scallop tried. Made a valiant effort, but unfortunately, all of this metal... All... 600 of it? He's inside of Orphelius' territory. Orphelius can just do whatever the heck they want with it. So, at this point, Orphelius is fine. They're in a really good spot. Those roaches turned the game around, because if it weren't for that, Anir had this match. But, Orphelius had that. Remember, I think they mentioned last week in chat that there should have been more roaches in one of the games that was played. I think it was the second game that was played between Dimefriend and Anir on Vitra. Clearly, Orpheus very keen on those roaches and wanted to make sure they didn't come off as a hypocrite. At this point, though, I would still say it's fairly even. Anir does have a stronger economy. Orpheus does have 2,000 metal worth of more stuff destroyed. And overall, the metal, metal use value still in Anir's favor. Unit value still slightly in Anir's favor. That roach was almost more a way of evening things out rather than giving Orpheus the advantage. That being said, it does give Orphelius the territory they need on their own terms, but at the same time, it's really hard to say what that means, because Orphelius is coming in here, they're, they're kind of out of position to defend, they're relying on the Stardust, which is not an unfair thing to rely on, considering it is a very strong defensive turret, and the boys don't outrange it. How do they do outrange it? What the heck? Oh, of course, because it's, it's up a hill. Being up a hill is definitely one of those things that makes your life miserable. Even though boys being boys with that slow effect, they... They're fine. One or two more boys, that actually would have been a dead Stardust. Still, though, Orphelius, while they didn't defend, their Stardust did a fine enough job, and at this point, again, they're in back lines. Not as productively as last time, but hey, getting rid of a conch is always good. Getting rid of workers is always, always good. Especially as Anir is desperately trying to rebuild, though, again, their economy is on par. They're still doing all right, economically speaking. It's just that it's tough to make sure that they have that unit value advantage, and now they've lost it. After losing that army up here, that unit value advantage is completely gone. There's a like good 2,500 metal between the two. There's no easy way that Anir is getting back from this. 
I would love to see it if they do, but the Grizzly is their hope. If that Grizzly comes in and manages to do the damage it needs to do, which is tricky considering that rogues are pretty much the thing you'd use to counter the Grizzly, I I could see this turning around again, but at this point, Anir's major advantage is the fact that they have a lot of economy. The major disadvantage, all of it's going into this one unit. So, it's going to come down to that one last battle, but it's still clearly Orphilius' advantage. Orphilius has managed to take the advantage just by having enough units in play and just by killing off enough of Anir's. Good Roach play. An excellent start displacement. And overall, that's just given Orphilius the match. The Grizzly, however, it's done. It's going to do what it can. Might be able to tear apart these bandits, but even then it's hard to say, just considering the bandits have spread out. I mean, that's how you typically move units, is to spread them out like that, and that's worked out. Even though a few of them have died, but who cares? I mean, those bandits, they're cheap. Orphilius has enough money, they can easily rebuild them. They're like, what, 25 sec- or not even, they're seven-ish seconds each. Actually, with the caretaker, it's more like five, like three or four seconds at, at the very most. Yeah, unfortunately for any of that, Grizzly is not the option to go for when you have a bunch of rogues bearing you down. Granted, at that point, it was already half built, so I can see why they wouldn't stop it. That's 4,000 metal that's already been put into that. Sorry, 1,000 metal put into that. So, yeah, that's fair. At the same time, though, I do not agree with the scallops at this point. They made sense earlier on, but given the rogues are very present, they're basically the core of Orphelius' army, the scallops won't have any chance. At this point, I would almost say ducks. Almost. They would be able to get in and deal some damage, but ducks are a weird unit. I mean, they're reasonably quick, but again, they're effectively just skirmishers with a faster walk speed. That's pretty much how I generally define them, and this is why the scallops not recommended. As we see right here, there's not much that can be done. The rogues come in, they fire off the rocket volleys, they kill the scallops. The scallops can't retaliate. Grizzly doing what it can to retaliate, actually managing to get rid of one of the racketeers. Nice shot there. Still, though, it won't be enough. Unless Anir switches their unit composition entirely, which, like I said, probably to ducks. They are going for boys. Not a terrible choice. Not a great choice. I mean, it's essentially it's skirmisher v. skirmisher at that point, which is at least even. At least a good use of money, re relatively speaking. But speaking of money, Orphilius, they have about twice the economy of Anir at this point. Most of it being reclaim, but that's fine. That's all that matters. The fact that they have that economy available to use is still a big deal. Not to mention the Grizzly having been racketeered away. Again, a big reason why you don't necessarily want to use heavy units against shield bots. They just counter them. So with this setup, Anir's, like I said, ducks. Anir's ducks are the only thing that would actually save him from this. Or a complete factory switch, but I don't think they have the opportunity. This is a little late for a factory switch. I just can't see that working. But yeah, that's no ducks forthcoming. It's some boys, some conches. The Grizzly is still in play, and it's being repaired. Most of the disarm is gone, but there's enough racketeers that it won't even matter. Unless one really good flanking assault from this Grizzly takes out all the racketeers at once. If that happens, that'll give a near about 30 seconds of grace period. And that is not what happens. That is absolutely not what happens at all. Because if that happened, it would have been far better for a near, but at this point, a near is now staring down defeat in the face. The Grizzly is going down, There's it's disarmed completely, there's nothing stopping it from dying to all these bandits. The bandits, I think, will go down to the Grizzly? Nope. Grizzly explosion will not kill them. The commander explosion will kill them. That's... no question about that. But at that point, you've destroyed the commander, you've destroyed a huge amount of the economy, you've destroyed the entire eastern force that Anir had, all the presence they had in the northeast side. And Anir realizes that is game, throws in the towel, and Orphelia takes it quite decisively, too, especially considering what happened earlier on. Like if you look at the graphs for metal, I mean, neck and neck. Anir was always slightly ahead, too. But Orphelius managed to come in just by killing more. Look, like Orphelius got way more value in every single fight. Anir managed to build more, Orphelius managed to kill more. And that worked out ultimately. Really, though, that roach. That roach here, that was the real MVP. Had that roach not been present, this would have been an Anir's game within five minutes. So, nice placement there, nice thinking, Orphelius. And that is why they are... Well, that's why they are the level of player they are. That's why the caliber of player they are. So anyway, that was that game. The next game is going to be a match between 400 and RAR on Ravaged. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. Oh, Snitch. Oh, never mind. I did... I keep calling it Roach. 
Chat's pointing out, it is a snitch now. That explains why they had the golden snitch image in the replay chat. Or the replay forum comments. Yeah, I'm still getting used to the renames. Especially since for the Shieldbot Factory, the Snitch is the only renamed unit. So yes, never mind. The Snitch. It was a golden Snitch. Well done. You caught that Snitch. But yeah, next match. 400 and RAR on Ravaged. Up in a second. Stay tuned until then.